It's day five of the 30 day yoga challenge. I am so excited that we are going to be focusing on flexibility. This is a topic I talk about a lot. My sort of philosophy uh, is blessed are the flexible. So let's learn how to be a little flexible on our interior with our emotions, our thinking, some of our internal drives, and also flexible out here. We're gonna practice it on the outside with our bodies in order to practice being flexible with what's going on inside of us. Let's start with our mountain pose, Tadasana as it's called in Sanskrit. So we're going to find ourselves standing. And again, if you need to use the wall for support, we're definitely gonna be using the wall during this in general. So you might wanna make sure that there's a spot cleared out around a, a flat space around the wall where you can do this practice. Or using a chair to support your body. With your feet a hips width apart, let's let your arms go loose by the side of your body. Fingers pointing down, maybe spread through the fingers. Press through the crown of the head on an inhale. Find some length through the spine. Exhale, tuck your chin. You may wish to rotate the wrists with the palms shining out. Whatever feels comfortable for you, find your foundation in this mountain pose. Maybe lifting your toes, pressing down through the corners of your feet. Inhaling, lifting the arms up, spreading nice and wide. Maybe even lifting the gaze as you breathe in. Just bringing the gaze past the fingers. Now let's exhale, bring your hands down to heart center, hinge at the hips, fold all the way forward as you fold the body down into our first standing forward fold. And remember, bring a bend into those knees, protect your low back, your body's precious. And if it's accessible to you, you may wish to just let your body ragdoll down, let your hands go loose, your arms go long, or maybe grab opposite elbows, maybe wag through the hips a little bit, warming up the spine. Just breathing here and feeling what it's like to be in this posture. And whether you use the shins for support, the wall or a chair, or just spread the arms out wide, let's inhale, come all the way back up, lifting up, stacking vertebrae upon vertebrae. Take the full length of your inhale, and then some, what the heck? Let's go slow. Lifting the arms all the way up, exhale your hands down to heart center. I'm now going to invite you into Trikonasana, or triangle pose. This is where the wall is going to come in handy. Coming out of your mountain pose, we're going to walk over to the wall, and I want you to position your right hip against the wall. With your feet together, your right foot right against the wall, and again, we need a clear kind of open space here. We're now going to step the left foot back so that the left heel is against the wall, but rather than the toes pointing forward, the left foot, the toes are pointing out at a right angle. The distance between your forward foot, your right foot, and your left foot is not specifically prescribed. We want your legs to be straight, but don't lock your knees. And we also want you to be comfortable here. It shouldn't be extremely strenuous to have your legs at this distance apart. I also recommend for everybody to have a chair close by or a table that you can use for balance as we get deeper into the posture. You also are going to want your, from this posture here with the right foot against the wall, the back foot against the wall, you're going to want to be having your back leaning against the wall here. Inhale to reach your right arm and left arm up, similar to our warrior two pose. And as if I was grabbing onto your right wrist and starting to pull you forward, go ahead and bend towards the right. Be careful not to collapse through the right side body. You wanna stay nice and strong and engaged here. Now your side angle pose here, or your triangle pose, might not look very deep, but what we're going for is a bending action where you're beginning to tilt from the top of the body. If you need to bring a bit of a bend to the right knee, that's okay. And this is where that table or chair come in handy. You can reach that right hand all the way down, touching the top of the chair or touching the top of the table in order to support your body. Again, making sure to stay nice and engaged through the right side body, not collapsing. You may wish to keep the left arm wherever it is, or maybe even reach it up higher but notice where you have to compensate in your body in order to move that left arm. 
And this is why we're using the wall as a support. Maybe even bringing your gaze up towards the left hand, wherever it is. And if it's accessible to you, again, be very careful and really pay attention to the movement in your body. Using the right arm as a support on the chair or tabletop, you may begin to pop up just off of that left foot ever so slightly, even coming onto the tips of your toes. And if your mind is messing with you here saying like, I must bring my left leg up parallel to the floor, notice that you have that thought process. This posture here is about playing around with balance, learning how to be flexible in ourselves, in our experience of the moment, and in our bodies. And don't be afraid to use that wall to lean against for balance. If you find yourself in triangle pose and your foot is off the ground or just hovering off the ground, maybe your toes are touching and lifting, touching and lifting, I'm not gonna leave you stranded here. Here's what I want you to do. Now, as if I'm there and I'm grabbing on to your left wrist and I'm lifting you up out of the posture, so come up out of the pose, leaning back to the left, planting that left foot on the ground. Let's come back to our mountain pose for a moment. Feet hips width apart, arms at the side of the body, Maybe opening the palms of the hands, shining out. Inhale, breathe in. Find some length through the spine. Exhale, tuck the chin. Just be in this moment. And whatever's showing up for you, any judgments, any thoughts or evaluations, breathe them in, notice them. Exhale, just be in this moment. All right, let's try the other side. So this time you're going to have your left foot against the wall, your left hip against the wall, toes pointed forward. And don't forget that if you had a chair or a table on one side, you might need to move the chair or the table onto the other side in order to accommodate for the fact that you're gonna need some support. You're gonna need something to reach out and touch to keep yourself balanced in this triangle pose. Step the right foot back and only so far that you can have the legs spread a little bit and that you can reach through the upper body so that we can reach left. But you don't want the feet to be so far apart that you're putting a load on your system and that now this is like a deep stretch just having your legs this far apart. Inhale to bring your arms up. We'll face left, looking past the left fingers. And this time, reaching left, as if I'm pulling you by your left wrist forward. And remember to be careful not to collapse through the left side body. Bring a bit of a bend into that left knee. You don't want to have an aggressive bend as if we were doing like a lunge or something very deep, but enough of a bend that you're protecting the leg and giving your body some flexibility. Reaching that right arm up. And this might be the expression of your triangle pose today. Use the wall as a support. Don't be afraid to lean back against the wall and maybe even experimenting with popping that right foot off of the ground. Maybe coming onto the tippy toes on the right foot, maybe lifting the right foot all the way, but using that chair or table with the left hand as a support to keep you balanced. And if you really wanna challenge yourself here, maybe even looking up towards that left hand, moving your gaze up. And if you really wanna challenge yourself here, using your left hand for balance but with your right arm up, Wherever it is, bringing your gaze up to your right hand and looking past your right fingers. Take a couple breaths here to be in this posture, noticing anything that shows up for you. And if you find your foot just hovering over the ground or if your foot is planted on the ground, that's fine. Maybe that's your triangle pose for today. Wherever you're at, as if you're Right wrist was being pulled up out of the posture, come out of the pose, dropping your right foot back onto the ground. Let's come back to our mountain pose. Feet a hips width apart, the palms at the side of the body, maybe splaying the palms out, shining out. Inhale, press through the crown of the head, exhale, tuck the chin. Experiment with finding softness in the shoulders while simultaneously shifting the weight forward, opening through the chest, having a nice broad chest. So here's what I'm going to invite you to do. 
from a nice flat seat or stacked on top of some pillows or towels, sit with the soles of the feet facing one another. This means that the knees are going to be bent splayed out. Now protect your hips here. You may wish to place your hands underneath your knees and lift your knees up a little bit so that they don't overextend. From here, I would like to invite you to just experiment with how deep is workable for you. And how you can tell is, again, once you start putting load onto your system, maybe experiment with really holding your knees up a little higher and then letting them down, letting them down, letting them down. Now, if there's a certain point where you start to feel uh, tension, where you start to feel too much pressure on the hips, right there, easing off a little bit, lifting your knees a little higher is where you're gonna wanna stop. For me, it's helpful to take blankets or pillows and put them underneath my legs to support my legs so that they're not splayed out as much to just keep my knees a little bit higher. And you don't need to prop up the knees, you can actually stick the blankets or pillows a little further underneath in order to really get those legs propped up. Now from here, I'm going to invite you to wrap your hands around your ankles. Sit nice and tall, and if you don't have long arms like I do and it's difficult for you to wrap your hands around your ankles, you can go ahead and place your hands over your knees. Find some length through your spine, inhaling to press through the crown of your head, and just notice any sensations in this posture. If you need a moment to pause and go ahead and take some pillows or blankets and put them underneath your legs, that's okay too. And wherever your arms are at, whether over your knees or if it's accessible to you being able to wrap your hands around your ankles, let's begin a little bit of a forward fold. Forward, folding forward ever so slightly. And if you notice that your upper body is able to come down and you're able to extend quite far, that's great. You might wanna take, again, some towels or some pillows or blankets to stack yourself up on. Alternatively, you may not have much depth in this pose today, and that has to be okay. Just take a moment to let yourself be wherever you're at. Maybe even using your arms to support your upper body if you're beginning to feel weak. Remember that this posture isn't about going so deep that you have this incredible feat of uh, uh, yogic contortionism. The purpose of this pose is to be in your body, to feel what it's like to be here now, and to work with what you have. Inhaling to come back up. Let's find some length through the spine. And let's go ahead and stretch the legs out forward. Maybe flop them back and forth, rotating through your ankles. You might wish to remove any of the blankets or pillows that you have supporting your body. With your feet flat in front of you, having your toes pointing towards you, let's see how much mobility we have here reaching forward. Maybe wrapping your hands around knees, maybe around shins. Maybe you're able to fold forward so far that you're able to wrap your hands around the ankles or around the feet, drawing in. Whatever is accessible to you here, just having a little bit of, again, a forward fold. Breathing, noticing the sensations of being in this practice. Forward folds are a time to slow down and to draw our attention within. This is a great time to check in with you and take stock of how you may be feeling, any thoughts that may be on your mind, and to really connect with the sensations that you're experiencing in your body. When you're ready, putting some weight into your hands, coming back up, sitting up nice and tall, we'll come back onto our backs now. With the knees bent and the feet flat on the floor, you're going to want to remove any blankets or towels that are supporting your body. Go ahead and find yourself with your palms facing down and just stepping the feet back ever so slightly so the feet are only a hips width apart and the feet don't need to be pressing right up against the buttocks, but you wanna step the feet in ever so slightly. With the knees bent, laying flat on your back, 
let's go ahead and check in with our neck, make sure that we're protecting the neck here. So you may wanna just lift your head up, lengthen through your neck, then place the head back down. With the palms flat down on the ground, beginning with the pelvis, I'm going to invite you to inhale and begin to lift the body up off the ground, putting weight into your heels and lifting slowly, vertebrae by vertebrae. Take the full length of your inhale and your exhale. Once you reach the top of this posture with your body off the mat, notice if there's a place where you go a little too far and you start putting pressure on your neck. If you get there, take some of the pressure off, come back down a little. Taking a full breath here, on your next exhale, come down slowly, dropping vertebrae by vertebrae. Remembering that yoga isn't about simply achieving a posture, it's about the journey of working through the postures, connecting your breath with your movement, and being mindful, being present of how that moves in your body. One more time, let's engage in this little bit of a back bend here, pressing into the heels, to inhale, lifting the pelvis off the ground, and slow, vertebrae by vertebrae. Take the full length of your inhale to lift off of the ground. If it's accessible to you, you may wish to inch the elbows in underneath the body, maybe even interlacing the fingers, pressing down through the forearms and elbows. And notice if that helps give you a little bit more stability or strength to lift through the posture, or notice if it's an invitation for your mind to be like, yeah, I can really like crank myself in here. Just pause and notice what your mind does with this adjustment of playing around with your arms under your body. Breathing here, wiggle the toes, being thankful for our toes, wiggle the fingers. On your next exhale, if your fingers are interlaced under your body, moving the hands out from under the body, dropping down vertebrae by vertebrae till you come flat down onto the mat. You may wish to extend your feet out into a final relaxation pose of Shavasana, or you may wish to come up seated, remembering that Namaste means the light in me acknowledges the light in you and bows to the light in you. The light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste. Hope you had a great practice. Thank you for joining me on this journey. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. Even if you don't have a YouTube account, it's simple to sign up. When you subscribe, it keeps you updated on all of the latest videos that I publish. It'll keep you updated on this 30 day yoga challenge and other challenges that I offer in the future. Hit the bell icon because that is what allows you to get notifications about the videos pushed directly to you so that you keep updated on them. I'm looking forward to seeing you in our next session for day six. Keep the yoga challenge up. Good for you for staying on this path. Thank you so much.